Is Bloodborne, the FromSoft game with the most unique set of weapons? You could definitely make a case for it. Within the game, there's 26 of what Bloodborne calls trick weapons. These are weapons you use in your right hand that can transform into an alternate state in some way, allowing for a variety of combination attacks. This might surprise you to learn, but there's actually a bunch of them I haven't tried before. My mission with today's video was to try every one of these weapons and then make an educated decision on which I like best and which I like least, ranking every single one of them along the way. So here it is, I'm going to rank all 26 of these weapons from worst to best. I think the main thing to say is I'm going to be mostly looking at movesets and aesthetics as opposed to how much damage they do, mainly because it's going to vary so much depending on what your stats are, how upgraded the weapon is, and also the gems equipped especially. Any of these weapons can be viable, and there's too many variables involved for me to judge them fairly against each other in this. So here we go. To keep things pretty straightforward, I'm going to be testing the weapon movesets on some more basic enemies right here in Yarnum, such as the Super Brick Bros right by the central Yarnum lamp. But of course, let me know what your favourite trick weapon is in the comments below, and if you like this content, how about hitting the subscribe button to let me know you're enjoying it and want to see more. We start off with number 26, the Tonitrus. So, this is the only weapon in the game with bolt damage built in, but you only get this damage when you press L1 to enter the transformed state. I say transformed in inverted commas because it's not really transformed, it just buffs the weapon with lightning for a short time. That's it. Otherwise, it's just a blunt mace with a pretty standard swinging moveset. Outside of the bulk damage, there really isn't too much to write home about here, and it behaves just as you would expect. Against enemies that are weak to bulk damage, yeah, it's alright. Against everything else, it's not great. It also has the joint lowest durability in the game, meaning you'll be nipping back to repair this thing at the workshop more often than not. I feel like there probably were possibilities to do something with this, maybe have the ball come off attached to a chain like a flail or something perhaps. For its niche use of bolt damage, you'd probably be better off just buffing a different weapon with bolt paper instead. Bolt paper is quite expensive, but you'll probably do more damage and have to spend less time running off to repair this thing. Overall, it's nothing special, and it's not something I would ton of trust in a fight. Number 25, Boom Hammer. This is a weapon that looks cool when you see a hunter using it for the first time in the DLC. I really wanted to get and use this ASAP, but once I did, it was kind of disappointing. It shares some similarities with the Tonitrus actually. It has the joint worst durability, and it doesn't have a true transform state, it just buffs the weapon with fire. However, this buff actually only lasts for one hit. I still find this better than the Tonitrus though, because the range is better, and it just looks cooler at least. Plus, fire is probably more useful overall than bolt from my experience, but for a weapon that looks like it should be an absolute powerhouse of destruction, this weapon fails to drop any boom whatsoever. The moveset's a little bit more interesting than the Tonitrus, and it's good against beasts, which, you know, this game has quite a lot of. But my hopes of wielding this weapon in any serious way were instantly hammered into the ground, and even trying it again these years later, I still feel the same. There isn't too much more to say on this one. This mostly seems to exist online now for people to make boomer jokes. Gotta love that boomer humour. 24. Threaded Cane. So, interestingly, this one has a bit of a following from a certain part of the community online, and apparently can be great, but I've never really seen it myself. Its normal form is a pokey stick, and the transform state is Bloodborne's whip equivalent. It does have a different damage modifier depending on its mode. The threaded mode is better against beasts, and the cane mode is better against enemies weak to righteous weapons. For skill builds, it's probably the best weapon to choose out of the three starting ones, but personally, I don't really like the moveset all that much, it doesn't really fit my playstyle. There is something pretty funny about smacking up enemies with a cane though, it seems very gentlemanly. I see why it's so effective against the enemies at Castle Canehurst. Number 23, Stake Driver. I'm probably going to get rinsed for this choice. I know this weapon has a big fan base. I tried really hard to use this weapon on my most recent run, but I just found it to be quite terrible, honestly. Its range is pretty short, and its damage pales compared to other weapons of similar size. The main gimmick is that when you press L1, it puts the metal stake into a launch position, kind of like an assassin's hidden blade. This actually reduces the range and damage even further, but it does mean you can do what is possibly the most powerful charged R2 attack in the game. Seriously, this thing does a lot of damage. But it has two pretty significant drawbacks. Firstly, the charge up time is huge. I think it's actually the longest charge up of any weapon in the game. And secondly, the range is terrible. I've used it at pretty close range to some bosses, and it just completely misses. Trying to get this to a position where you can actually hit an opponent is really difficult, especially if they're moving fast. I can't even imagine trying this thing in something like PvP with a human. You're left vulnerable for so long, all to charge an attack that will miss unless your opponent is right in front of you. This 
Just isn't for me, I'm afraid. I know there's videos of people one-shotting bosses with this with an extreme gem setup, but this weapon is kind of a one-trick pony. There's no reason to use this unless you're going for that charge or two, as all the other attacks can be done better by other weapons. I'll probably go with something else when there's so much at stake in battle. 22. Writer Palash. I've almost definitely mispronounced that. Anyway. Now on to Bloodborne's Rapier equivalent. This is a bit of an odd one. It's normal mode, it's a pretty standard Rapier moveset, but once transformed, it becomes another gun. So you could have this and your normal gun for a gun in each hand. If you want a gun build or you want to cosplay as a cowboy, this is probably for you. For me personally, I'm not that big on the range stuff, especially in this game, so it's not really for me. There's also the reliance on having bullets for both your guns, so unless you're willing to sacrifice health for bullets, this build is gonna require some heavy resource management. I will admit, there's something pretty cool about double guns though, definitely something you don't expect to see in a FromSoft game. The rapier side of things is okay, but it's not the most exciting for a game with so many unique choices that you could go for instead. For gun enthusiasts though, it's almost a rite of passage that you try this out. Number 21, Rifle Spear. Well, from one gun weapon combo straight onto another. This one has a much more basic name though. It's literally a rifle and a spear put together, so it's a rifle spear. It's pretty much just a normal spear type moveset, but when you press L2 in the transform state, you fire out a rifle blast with a wide range spread. The normal mode is a shorter one-handed spear, and the trick mode is basically a longer two-handed spear with the rifle attachment active. Trick mode actually has a surprisingly short range, apart from the charge R2 attack, which has some pretty decent distance it can pull off. It's not bad by any stretch, but it's not that interesting for me. I've never been much of a spear guy in these games, so it doesn't appeal much. I'd rather rifle through some other weapons to find one that fits me. Number 20, Chokage. This is another one that a lot of people love, and I tried it out actually in my recent Bloodborne playthrough. Outside of the blood, this seems more like a Souls weapon to me than Bloodborne. The moveset is very similar to a lot of sword weapons you might find in these games. It also doesn't have a proper trick mode. It's still the same sword, but just does blood damage at the cost of constantly draining your health. I'm really not a fan of health draining mechanics like this. You'll consume blood vials faster and you're in great danger if you take a hit. You can obviously restore some health from the rally system, but it adds an extra pressure which I, I just don't really like. The blood mode does more damage, but I never found it enough of an increase to justify the health loss, at least with the way I play. It does look cool, very chic, and the moveset is decent, but the main gimmick I'm just not a fan of. Number 19, Blood Letter. All I can think about when I see this weapon is that Braidor guy constantly invading you in the DLC. Well, this weapon is a pretty standard one-handed strike weapon in its normal mode, but becomes a huge two-handed spiky mace in its trick mode. It takes 20% of your health to pull off this transformation though, so not something you want to do unless your health is quite high. It's pretty lethal looking, and I certainly wouldn't want to be hit by it. It also has a ground slam attack for L2, but inflicts frenzy on you, which isn't great. Apparently the health you lose here is less than normal frenzy, but still, it's that risk aspect again which I just don't like very much. It's less harsh than the Chicago as it's a one-off hit of damage and you can prepare for it better, but my general recklessness as a player doesn't let me use weapons like this. Number 18, Cause Parasite. So this was the weapon I tried the most recently of any of them. I was actually really excited to give this a go as I had no idea what to expect. I'd actually never even watched any videos of people using it, and I figured if it's the reward for beating the Orphan of Koz, it must be something awesome. However, the first blocker was that it had a 20 arcane requirement, a stat which I hadn't leveled up at all. After getting 12 additional levels, I equipped the weapon and th there was nothing. Nothing happened. I thought it was a glitch in the game. It turns out, this weapon only really works when you have a specific rune equipped, the Milkweed Rune, that you get from completing a quest in the Research Hall. I definitely got this rune in previous playthroughs of the game, but I don't remember ever actually equipping it. So I slapped it on, and now Mr. Derp has become a Cauliflower. Okay, so now once we equip the weapon, it's a tentacle. Yep, a tentacle. A fairly slow moving tentacle, actually. The transform state is tentacles on both hands. Great. You can charge the L2 attack to do damage to multiple enemies, but the range doesn't seem great and it costs two bullets each time. Considering you have to beat one of the hardest bosses in the series and equip a specific room just to even use this weapon, it doesn't really seem worth it. It's probably fun for like a silly meme run, but other than that, it seems kind of niche. And look, I know there'll be comments saying if you set it up with the right gems and you've done enough farming to get the right gems, it can be great. But yeah, just I just don't really like the way it works. Plus, all I want to do is cut off pieces of my head and make cauliflower cheese. How am I supposed to fight the beast with that constant distraction? I've heard this weapon is supposed to be pretty good in PvP also, but again, 
It's that gem investment that it requires. Look elsewhere, because I won't be using this weapon. Number 17, Beast Cutter. So this is kind of like the Threaded Cane's oldest steroid taking brother. The normal mode is like a big smashy club, while the transform state is a big thick whip. The club is pretty fun, always cool to smash things down and the whip is probably the heaviest whip in any FromSoft game. Not sure if that's a great claim to fame, but there you go. As you might imagine, this thing does serrated damage, so good against beasts. This seems to do some good poise damage as well, and obviously the range is pretty good because of its whipping potential. If you want to whip but favor strength builds, then this is the weapon for you. The moveset is okay, but it's a bit slow. I think this could be a fun weapon to try out perhaps, but I don't feel super enamored with it. it just doesn't cutter it for me. Number 16, Saw Spear. So this from what I gather is like the skill version of the Saw Cleaver. The untrick mode is almost exactly the same. Quick R1s for the win most of the time here. The transform state is, as the name suggests, more of a spear than a cleaver and has some okay moves. For me, and I'll talk about this later, it's those transform attacks that make the Saw Cleaver great. The L1 R1 combo on this just doesn't seem as good, at least from the amount I tried it out. I will say, the spear mode actually seems better than the Saw Cleaver's transform state, but it doesn't hit those same notes as the Saw Cleaver for me, perhaps because I don't really use skill builds in Bloodborne. I'm sure the skill build enthusiasts will love this and have a great experience with it. Number 15, Beast Hunter Scythe. So this weapon's a bit of a strange one, it really subverted my expectations actually. The normal mode is very similar to the normal mode of Burial Blade, so I was expecting some kind of scythe when I transformed, but the transform state is basically the saw cleaver. So if you love the untransformed state of these two weapons and wanted to combine them together, then this is right up your street. The moves are okay, but it doesn't seem that interesting to me as it's just a pastiche of two other weapons that I think I'd rather be using than this one. I'm sure it has its fans, and it's by no means bad from what I've seen, just doesn't do anything too new or exciting here. It just seems to be siphoning its ideas from other weapons. Number 14, Hunter Axe. Ah, the weapon I chose as my first starting weapon on my first playthrough of Bloodborne. I actually really didn't like this when I first played it, and I ended up switching shortly after. I think the thing is with the axe, it's kind of a bit of a one-trick pony. That trick, however, is awesome. I'm talking, of course, about the Charged R2 and the Transform State. So, this is kind of similar to the Stake Driver in that regard. It does a lot of damage and has huge knockback. It's undeniably good, but I kind of feel like why would you use anything else apart from this move if you're using the Hunter's Axe? On the plus side, the range of this Charged R2 is really good, which instantly makes it much better than the Stake Driver in my opinion. The untransformed state of this weapon though is very average, and even the other transformed state moves aren't that special. It's two-handed Charged R2 or nothing with this I feel. It's probably the reason I ended up giving this up pretty early for our next entry. What's our next entry I hear you axe? Number 13, Kirkhammer. This weapon carried me through almost the whole game and DLC on my first playthrough. I only changed weapon for the Orphan of Cos. The untransformed state is a little sword, which is okay for some quick attacks, but not the best. The transformed state though, is a big smashy hammer, which deals blunt damage. Great for some bosses like Rom, who I had no issue with, by the way, as a result. The moveset is a bit slow, but I found something pretty satisfying about delivering massive overhead swings onto my opponent's skull. The L2 also delivers a decent side swing for crowd control. It can definitely be a bit limiting though, and I'm not sure I'd go back to this weapon, but I think it still has some charm for me and the memories of bringing this thing down on Rom's head are still hammered into my brain. Weird that I normally avoid big heavy weapons in Souls and Elden Ring, but here in this faster paced combat situation, I initially gravitated towards this beast. Number 12, Church Pick. They just couldn't resist having some kind of pickaxe type thing in here, could they? At least you don't have to lead a pig to mushrooms to get this one. This weapon doesn't look the greatest, but the range is pretty good. And for some reason it has serrated damage, which seems odd. Does that look serrated to you? I've seen a lot of discourse online saying this weapon is supposedly OP and can tear through bosses. I do think the moveset is pretty cool, in the same way as the Kirkhammer. Drilling this spike down onto an enemy skull seems ever so satisfying. I also like the L2, this little ankle hooker move. There's some good combos to be had here. I guess it's kind of like a pickaxe version of the burial blade. Maybe I'll pick this weapon for a future playthrough of Bloodborne. Ask me about it in a couple years time. Yes, I did just repeat that same joke. Number 11, Simon's Bow Blade. Well, for all those who complained about the lack of bow and arrows in Bloodborne, I'm actually kind of joking, but were there people that complained about this? Was there anyone missing this? Anyway, we've got Simon's Bow Blade. I like this quite a bit actually. The charge up for the normal mode has this cool looking spinning attack 
which sort of reminds me of the Rokuyo. The transform state is exactly what you'd expect. It's a bow. The damage seems kind of good, and obviously for range builds, this is what you want. As I said, I'm not massively keen on the range builds and relying on ammo, even if you can cut your health for more, but I think this is kind of one of the best of the range weapons, and something I would actually kind of be interested in trying in a future run. You still have a nice twisty blade to handle your foes, even if you do run out of bullets here, so that's pretty good. Put a bow on this, it's a nice weapon I'd be happy to receive as a gift. Number 10. Blade of Mercy. Now, this weapon is pretty cool. It belongs to a very memorable NPC and is one of the faster weapons in the game. Either keep it as one blade or split it into two. Either way, you'll be getting some quick nippy attacks in. There's some great moves in the transform state that help you adjust your positioning, weaving in and out to deliver damage on the way. I think if there's a downside to this weapon, it's that the range of these pretty short blades isn't the best. But having an attack that can do damage and move you back out of danger at the same time is really handy, and I can mercy how that could really save you in a pinch. Both states seem viable, and honestly, I'd be tempted to give this weapon a go. The only downside is you have to either kill Eileen, which is horrible, I don't want to do that, or complete her quest to get them, which is long and also pretty challenging. But in any case, definitely worth giving them a go. Number 9. Amygdalan Arm Now, this for me is a weird weapon done right. Much better than the Cos Parasite in my opinion. I was really surprised how much I actually like this. The normal mode is a smashy club. And as we know, I like smashy clubs, you like smashy clubs, we all like smashy clubs. But anyway, the transform state is where it gets pretty cool. Now, we've got smashy club, but with a tendril blade that stretches out and slashes at things. The charge dial 2 in this mode is especially wicked, and you slam the ground, but then the tendril whips out in three directions to deal some slashing damage to all enemies. This would be great for dealing with a big crowd very effectively. It's just a shame that it's hidden away in the DLC, Maybe I need to do a New Game Plus playthrough with this weapon. Can't see any arm in it. Number 8. Saw Cleaver. Well, this weapon is a classic. I'd wager many players picked this and kept it for their whole playthrough, and for good reason. Would you believe I never used this weapon until I did a BL4 run on this game? Admittedly, the transform state isn't very good. I'm not sure why you'd ever use it as it does less damage and is slower. Normal R1 combo is great, or the R1-L1 transform combo is excellent. You can even add in more L1s after that. That combo works wonders on Lady Maria, by the way. Does this weapon do anything too new or exciting? No, but it's kind of the poster child Bloodborne weapon, and it's absolutely perfect for beginners of this game, or experienced players, or anyone trying out a no leveling run. An all round, pretty good weapon, apart from the transform state, but even that doesn't hold it back from being great. If you've never played Bloodborne, you could do far worse than starting with this. What should you do when you see Lady Maria? Cleave her! Number 7. Burial Blade. So here we have German's weapon. Unless you either die or use a bold hunter's mark during the secret moon presence fight, you can't get this weapon until New Game Plus, but it is worth the wait. The normal mode is a curved sword, but press that L1 and you switch into a massive two-handed scythe. This thing looks awesome, and the transform attacks have a nice wide sweeping range. The charge style 2 has huge knockback, I mean just look at this guy fly. Great for crowd control, great range, looks badass, belongs to one of the coolest bosses in the game. I mean, what more could you want? Perhaps the only downside is that you probably won't be using it until New Game Plus, but being able to use this is definitely a good incentive to keep playing. Time to bury myself in this game for a bit longer. Number 6. Ludwig's Holy Blade. This is the classic OP Bloodborne weapon. I know I said I wouldn't talk about damage, but it's kind of hard to ignore just how strong this thing is. The normal mode is a standard sword, but the transform state actually makes use of the sword sheath for a huge smashy combo. You can pancake enemies and break poise fairly easily with this weapon's strong attacks, including its mega charge up stab. I remember this thing crushing Ludwig on one of my playthroughs a few years ago. Ironic really, crushed by his own blade. I think if there's one downside, this weapon isn't that interesting from a design perspective. I mean, it's just a sword. Compared to some of the other imaginative weapons we've seen so far, this weapon falls a bit short in my opinion, but for pure power potential, it can't be ignored. After a few of these stabs, your enemy's definitely going to be full of holes. You know, holy? Alright, we made it to the top 5, and number 5 is Beast Claw. So, Bloodborne's equivalent of the claw weapon, and this one is excellent. It's another weapon that pairs with a special transformation rune like Cos Parasite, only this one is still usable without the rune, but you definitely want to use this one with the rune, as it not only improves the moveset, 
but also gives you a permanent beast meter. The attacks are what you expect from claws, slashes and feral swipes. The damage is probably smaller than you would expect, but the attacks are all super fast and they get stronger the more you attack due to the beast meter there. You can also press L2 in the trick mode to let out a beastly roar to give your meter a further boost. I really like this because it saves on having to spend insight on beast blood perts and it works really well with the fast attacks of these claws. As such, this nifty little number has clawed its way into my top 5. Number 4. Logarius's Wheel Well, if you're surprised to see this one so high, trust me, I'm just as surprised as you are. I really didn't expect to like this as much as I did. It's such a bizarre weapon that you just wouldn't expect to see in a game like Bloodborne. Also, why does Legarius have a wheel? So many questions. But anyway, this is a big old smashy weapon. Its transform state decreases physical damage, but ramps up that arcane damage to great heights. You can also spin the wheel to charge it up for some greater damage still. This weapon does a great job at stunning enemies and has a powerful charge up attack. Do I mainly just like this for the novelty? No, I mean maybe partly, but it definitely seems pretty viable and arcane damage is nice to have. It's a bit outside my wheelhouse, but I like it. Number 3. Rakuyo. We've reached the top 3 and here we have Lady Maria's weapon. This is kind of like a better version of the Blaze of Mercy. The moveset is really cool. The untransformed state is nice with better range than Blaze of Mercy and some pretty good thrusty stab attacks. Splitting into two means you have a sword and a shorter dagger type weapon. The dual weapon attacks are a lot of fun, especially the spinning charged attack, such grace and poise there. The transform attack again gets a good number of hits in, and this weapon speed is a huge plus. It doesn't do anything too crazy, there aren't any additional like special abilities beyond this, but I can't think of anything wrong with it. It does what it needs to do very well, and is worthy of any player's time. I definitely plan to Raku use this weapon for a run soon. Okay, I, I genuinely apologise, that was really, really terrible. Number 2. Holy Moonlight Sword so, from one boss weapon onto another. This time we've got Bloodborne's equivalent of the series classic Moonlight Greatsword. Ludwig wields this weapon and seems like he has some kind of romantic relationship with it. The untransformed state is decent actually, it's a fairly standard sword moveset, but perfectly usable. Of course though, it's the shiny glowy transform state that you all came to see. This thing fires off arcane powered slash projectiles with the charged R2, which is good for a bit of range, but of course this bad boy can also hold its own in close combat with large slashes and a thrust attack with a shockwave for its L2. I really like using this weapon, it looks epic, it's part of probably the coolest boss cutscene in the series and it's got a good variety of moves. Technically, I should dock points for the fact it's just a big old sword, but when it looks this cool and comes with projectiles, I think we can overlook it. Number 1. The Whirly Gig Saw. Well, if you saw my old video about favourite weapon in every Souls game, you knew this was coming. Is this the most technically proficient or most unique weapon? No, probably not. Is the normal club mode that great? No, not really. But I just can't get enough of swinging the spinning saw around. The charge up attack hits multiple times as the saw spins once you slam it into the ground. This thing does really excellent poise damage, staggering both enemies and bosses alike. Of course, there's a pièce de résistance, the L2 attack, which sticks the blades out in front and holds it there while it spins. You can even move around in the state so you can chase down enemies that try to get away and grind their HP into dust. It's really great against some of the bosses also, including Orphan of Cause. This weapon is fantastic and I won't hear otherwise. Don't take my word for it though, give it a whirl yourself. So those are all the Bloodborne trick weapons ranked from my least favourite to favourite. But tell me what you think, what's your favourite Bloodborne trick weapon? Let me know in the comments below. If you like the vid, let me know by hitting the subscribe button which also supports the creation of future content. Until then guys, have a good one and see you next time. Thank you for watching.